sense that they were going to be like, really, you're going to take this to Fort Marshall? Fine. I don't feel like getting my ASUs on. <laughs> right. That, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm pretty sure, like, that. that's like, I don't, I, I, I still tell, I still tell your story, you know, fairly, eh, semi-regularly probably, but I, yes. I, I, but the title of that story is literally the $600 burrito story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah fucking, cool, that goddamn burrito you ate that night cost you fucking 600 fucking dollars. Yeah. Uh, fucking what? bullshit. What? He got, when um, we, hey, oh, we, we may have to save that one. We may have to save that one for when it's recording. <laughs> oh, it's on. It's on. We're on. We're, we're, we're on. on. We're on. Yeah. Dude. We're on. There. All right. Yeah, <laughs> you... tell, tell, us, tell us the story. All right. So my, uh, so they were <laughs> La Coretta, Fort Leonard Wood. <laughs> my, my, my wife at the time, well, I'm sorry, my girlfriend, my wife now had come to visit and, uh, at the time, the sergeant major's big uh, big thing was no guest in the barracks. So me trying to do the right thing, I'm like, you know, I don't want to, I won't take her to the barracks. I'm still in uniform. I don't have a hotel yet, but she's been flying all day. We're gonna go take her, give her something to eat, uh, go get a hotel room, and call it a night. Well, at the time, you weren't allowed to be off post past 1900 in your uniform, and you know, I knew that, and she still tried to do the right thing. But it was Wednesday, and this restaurant was like randomly slammed. Mm-hmm. And uh, we, I gave gave the waiter my debit card and said, "Hey, I gotta get out of here." And no shit, nineteen hundred rolls around. First sergeant walks right up through the door. Hey, you come here. Yeah. So I go, puts me at parade rest in the middle of the whole restaurant. Yeah. Says, "You know, you're not supposed to be in uniform right now, right?" I said, "Roger, first sergeant. I'm just waiting to get my debit card back." Mind you, he, m- mind you, mind you, we we had been there for an hour and a half at this point. Yeah. So, like, yeah. so we got we got there with plenty of time to spare, basically, like. It was like a random Wednesday night, and they had like two waitresses there. So I'm just waiting to get my debit card back so I can get the hell out of this restaurant. And next thing I know, I go in the next day, get my counseling for Article 15. Two weeks later, I get demoted from E4 to E3. Yep. Two weeks extra duty, two weeks restriction. All because, all because he was fucking trying to do the right thing and fucking... I'm, like, I wasn't drinking. Like, we were literally yeah. just eating dinner. Yeah, and I... And, and, they were they they were they were threat they were trying to threaten me with one too, and I was able to get out of mine by there's a there's a kind of a clause in six seventy dash one that states if a junior enlisted soldier attempts to make a correction, all they have to do is attempt to make a correction. Like and once you attempt to make a correction, that's it. So when 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 my when Chris walked in, I just all I said was, How come you're still in your uniform? You know, like just like just I was just curious. I didn't give a fuck, right? But just just out of curiosity, because I was there with my ex-wife and my oldest daughter, uh, Araya, and Chris and, and his old lady walked in. I just I just didn't know because we'd gotten off work and I went home, changed changed my clothes, and got got the uh, got the family out, and then we all met for dinner. Yeah. Well, they tried to fucking go ahead, Chris. Go ahead. Fancy O had let me leave at like fifteen hundred so I could drive to St. Louis to go pick her up from the airport and right. come back. Now that's a four hour round trip. Right. You so know, Fort would. Yep. So, uh, not, not, no, it was like 1300, I think maybe, maybe a little later than that, but we ended up at the restaurant pretty much right at like 1730, 1745. Yeah, it's exactly, yeah. exactly when you got there. But like, exactly. we went straight to St. Louis, we right to the restaurant. It was like already a planned thing, but yeah, that was, that this was the time. This, <laughs> this, this, this particular first sergeant he's referring to is like, was like simultaneously one of the best and one of the worst at the same time. And, it, and it's really hard. It's really hard to quantify. Like when this dude was good, he was like all the way good, like, like beyond beyond the pale good but when he when he was bad you got crushed like a fucking housefly with a sledgehammer you know what i mean yeah. like and that's where when 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 chris lost his fucking rank it, it took him six months to get it back so a hundred dollars a month that's why i call it the six hundred dollar burrito story because fucking they they literally took his fucking rank over a fucking archaic obscure fucking 1950s style fucking rule at yeah. fort leonard wood for no fucking for no fucking reason, because God forbid we ever fucking do anything outside of black and white in the army, you know. There's no, there's never a shade of gray. It's got to be black or white, right? Yeah. And a lot of a lot of us were trying to push Chris, and I I understand why he made the decision he did. We, a lot of us were trying to push Chris to fight it. And but when you're young young in service and young in time in in service, you know, like and I, I get I get why Chris just kind of took it on the chin. Like I get it, but it was. I was I was pretty I was pretty fucking pissed off for my buddy because fucking it was it was bullshit to see him come back to the formation as a fucking private when he had just gotten his fucking goddamn rank he had just made specialist and he's yeah, a goddamn yeah. good, he's a that goddamn sucks. good soldier too yeah yeah he's it goddamn, sucks. Chris so the Chris, is one, Chris is one of the best it, go ahead Chris sorry 
So the only reason I didn't fight it is because so one a captain at Jag wanted me to fight it for like excessive uh, punishment. Mm-hmm. But um, um, they like it got to the point where like the major that worked there came in and was like, "Look, he can fight this, but he's going to lose." It says right here he's not to be off post past nineteen hundred in uniform. He was not, he was off post past nineteen hundred in uniform. And that major is fucking wrong because fucking you were you were established in the in the restaurant well prior. It's not your fault. The fucking goddamn restaurant was was fucking booked. You know, like whatever. This by the way, this restaurant was like well known for like very speedy service, very fucking everything. You, you know, you you got your order taken fast, you got your food fast, you got your bill fast. You yeah. Know? And 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 this is even with you like you could take your time to eat there, but everything came quick. Yeah. Yeah. And this is like the one the one time that their service was fucking slow. Happened to be this one night, and by the way, Chris, in that in that particular unit, in that twelve Charlie unit, Chris was one of their fucking best junior enlisted soldiers by far. Like it wasn't even a fucking, it was not even a fucking yeah. a question of his fantastic uh, abilities as a soldier. Like he yeah. was by far one of the hardest working soldiers in that whole company, and they went and they used and they they fucking crucified him over a fucking bullshit rule to set an example for the fucking rest. And that was kind of like where. This is right around the time where I was getting ready to fucking reclass from being a mechanic over and going over the infantry. And it was like, I clearly made the fucking right decision because, you know, fuck, fuck these guys. Fuck these like senior enlisted assholes, dude, that want to like, like you, you're so fucking worried about a fucking uniform violation, but how come fucking the barracks fucking suck? You know, like, yeah, yeah. how come, how come you can't keep your fucking personal life fucking outside of fucking outside of fucking work? You know, like what, whatever. Right. Like, for I like all legit. The- got hemmed up because i was trying to do the right thing <laughs> by not bringing her to the barracks <laughs> hey at least at least your uniform was squared away unlike some yeah. soup sandwiches out there you know because you know they'll, they'll they'll you know they'll look at some guy who's all shagged up you know they'll be like oh fix yourself but really if you really think about it the punish the punishment is is you know get you know look look right at least you were looking right and you were looking good when you did it that that's how it's done chris Perfect. Perfectly pressed, fit you camo. <laughs> Chris, so uh, uh, real, real quick, why don't you, why don't you go ahead and like officially kind of introduce yourself to everybody, man? Ah, uh, sure. So uh, I'm Staff Sergeant Bodet. Uh, I'm a 12 Charlie, currently stationed in Korea. Um, I don't know. That's really it. <laughs> are you uh, are, are you drinking so, anything tonight? Uh, yeah, I guess so. I got a few things that I wanted to. Uh, I brought out for y'all. So I'll do the this thing first. Uh, this is called a. Oh, I don't know if you can do it right there. A it's Dawn 808. So the story behind this little guy, this is a $7 can, by the way. And it's one, like one can? 100, 140 mil, uh, milliliters. That's it. What the, so what the story why it's called. What the story why it's called. I don't know. <laughs> what is it? What is it? So, so hold on. So it's uh, it's called Dawn 808. Yeah. And what this guy did here on the uh, on the can he purposefully blacked out 808 times in order to create the perfect hangover solution. And this is what he eventually came oh, up with. Fuck. The, the absolute cure. And let me tell you, last weekend, I drank four shots of tequila, a tequila sunrise, a gin and juice, or a gin and tonic, whatever. Uh. Uh, a few <laughs> shots of whiskey and a few beers. One of these, and I was up by seven. Had my laundry done by nine. <laughs> fuck up! Are that, you serious? That's incredible. It is, is like. It, is there any way to get that in the states? No, nah, I mean uh, you might be able to buy it, uh, ship it, but yeah. So yeah, down goes this one. The uh, Pedial- Pedialyte is the closest thing I can come to with that. Like Absolutely. this tastes like like soil and like old <laughs> licorice or something, but it works. <laughs> but it works. As long as it works. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So right. at least it's, this is better than what you find in like. It's better than what you find in like some of these like uh, bodegas in the corner with the hangover <laughs> helper, and you see the picture with the guy like. Ugh. Yeah. Now that doctor right there gets you right every time. That's great. So this is uh, this is Cass. This is essentially Korean Bud Light, which makes you realize that uh, even the United States can fuck up a light beer because this is like the shittiest <laughs> beer and it's better than Bud Light. Oh, I have but, you, my friend. <laughs> and then, uh, obviously, I'm not going to come to this from Korea without a little of this. So that's grapefruit oh, soju. soju. Oh, yeah. Yep. Soju. That's the grapefruit soju right there. So I'm going to start off with that. All right. Oh, so, yeah. uh, if, I, if 
describe this, it is like, I hate grapefruit. And luckily, this is like the worst tasting grapefruit, which makes it the best, <laughs> the most inaccurate flavor of all time. But it's delicious. All I've got, all I've got today is just a little. I went kind of basic, so I just got a little. Tum- I got a little tumbler of uh, Captain Morgan. So here's here's to you, old buddy. Freaking, it's good to see you again, man. Cheers, cheers, you guys. Yeah, and I'm 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 on a no no drip year with me and my wife, but I will salute to you with my butter roll. Absolutely. Hey, probably, uh, and probably with and probably with a uh, probably with a joint here in a little bit too, right, John? Yeah, um, well, no, not today. I, I already had it this morning. Okay, okay, right on. Yeah, right you, on. you know how it is the 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 medicinals, you know, here in New Jersey and stuff like that. I love it. You Nothing wake, wrong with that, homie. You wake up, the smell goes out, and mm. <laughs> nothing, nothing, nothing is better. Nothing is better than fresh uh, gunpowder, though, or carbon. Oh, yeah. no, nothing is yeah. better than fresh carbon, though. Yeah. Hey, to gunpowder and pussy, live by one, die by the other, love to smell them both. <laughs> there oh, you go. Hey, <laughs> hey. My man. Who are? My man. Who are? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, John, did you, I, I know you were kind of curious about Chris's MOS because it's, I don't want to say, it's it's not very, it's not exactly an obscure MOS by, by any stretch, but it's also not, when you, when you think about the engineers, it's also probably not the first MOS you probably think about. So Absolutely. So what were you? What were you kind of? And I will. I will try to keep my mouth shut and let Chris talk as much as humanly possible about this. Because although we were in the same unit for two years together, I was never a fucking engineer, and he obviously is. So, fucking, <clears throat> I'll try to well, keep my trap shut when well, he's talking. Well, to start off, I have this little cheesy line that I came up with while watching these recruiting videos, and that it's literally the twelve C engineers literally lead the way. You know, oh, yeah. you know, it's like it, after yeah. some of the stuff that I was seeing, you know, look at deep diving in these videos and I stopped playing um, Red Dead Redemption because I was do- like simultaneously. I'm just like, man, I'm running into <laughs> this game and I'm just like, whoa, what the fuck is that thing that just rolled out in the water? And, and you know, it, it was just incredible to me to see that you guys have to adapt to the environment to to make everything work. My first question what is the most obscure or interesting machine that you've had to use to make to make a bridge? Oh, so hands like so you probably saw like the floating one. Uh, we call that the IRB Improved Ribbon Bridge, but we uh, we have one called the DSB, which is the Dry Support Bridge. And this truck, it's I mean, you YouTube that thing, and you're gonna watch a three-hour-long video. But it's a uh, it's essentially a transformer that sits on the back of a PLS and we literally unfold this entire thing open and then the, tr- the whole truck extends out and what it essentially becomes is a uh, is like a crane with what well, like an I-beam system so like once the whole truck is open and extended we actually have a crane that we pick up bridge pieces and send across the gap um, in order to place one down and that thing is like like if you've never seen anything like it before you'll never see it again like it's 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 pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah I'm, looking, it, I'm looking at it right now. It is huge. Yeah, yeah, it's massive. <clears throat> oh, and I I actually like okay. Let's see. I think this is a good picture here. Hopefully it. Uh... There go. That is, is that is that something that that it does where it extends over that small little. Uh, yeah, so I think it's a little small, but yeah, yeah, that that's it. That's that's exactly it. Yep. And then the one in the upper left, that's the uh, that's the truck itself. So it folds into that. Um, and it's able to go. Uh, it's able to go forty six meters. That's incredible. So. Yeah. Th- this. Yeah. That. That's incredible. So um, that, now also that I saw that you guys are part of your training is that you have to learn how to drive these vehicles as well. Was, was that a difficult time to learn how to drive in different terrains with these? Man, so that's kind of the one thing I think the Army kind of kind of fails on is teaching drivers. Like you get like these people who drive semis and they go to school for weeks. In AIT, they, we, we take a lap around Fort Leonard Wood and you're qualified, you know. Um, so it, it helps uh, – you know, we, we definitely don't put the uh, the lower enlisted in those at first. You know, if we do junior enlisted, staff sergeant, <clears throat> junior enlisted. Oh, uh, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so, 
anyway, uh, but like if, if we put them in there, we make sure it's like at first, like, like Fort Hood's a great spot because it has a whole lot of training area in the back. So, you know, no civilian traffic, none of that. So oh, if, when great. we teach, they, yeah, they'll put a few miles over there before we uh, put them on the highway. Here in Korea, it's nuts because tra- like they drive like it's crazy here. I can imagine like, there's a lot that's just, you know, from what I've seen articles and TV and stuff like that, there's just nothing but terrain. Uh, in, in Korea, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this place is like some of the most beautiful cities I've ever seen in the world. Or ever seen, not in the world, but like ever, that I've ever seen. Yeah. Uh, all those rumors you hear about this being like, oh, crap, I'm on orders for Korea. This is, this is going to suck. Now, if you sit in your room the whole time, like, but if you get out and go see this place, like, I'm kicking myself in the ass for not bringing my family out here because it's, it's, it's nice. <laughs> I love it here. Now, Chris, really- correct me if I'm wrong. Like, you, you're doing a year unaccompanied in Korea, right? But if you had brought your family, you would have had to stay there for what, two or three? Two years. Okay. Okay. But yeah. but you would have had your but you would have had your family there. Right. And now, like I said, the only reason we didn't bring them in the first place is because. Everyone heard like the horror stories of Korea and how terrible this is, but then you get here and you're like, "No, this must be your first duty station because you haven't seen <laughs> you haven't seen what bad looks like." Right. You know. Right. You, one of the mentalities that like you know when you come in to the military, you know you, you you're gonna see the world, you're gonna see the world. You know, the top. Eventually, on a, on a, on a long enough timeline, eventually you will. Absolutely. Eventually. So you know, it, it it would be behoove of you to to really. You know, okay. if you're if you're put somewhere, really explore it, really understand what, where you're at, because that may be the only time that you go there. Right. In some cases, where I, I know people who are in their third deployment into into Korea right now, which is, you know, it happens too. But you can you can you can, you, you can absolutely request places like Korea and Germany, uh, depending yeah. on your, depending on your MOS. You can go to places like fucking Japan mm-hmm. um, and other you know other other areas. You can absolutely request them. A lot of most people don't. Most people tend not to. But you know, yeah. like in Chris's position, where he kind of just dis- discovered that Korea, you know, a lot of the hype about Korea was bullshit, and it's actually not a bad place to be fucking stationed. You know what I mean? Like that's where, you know, the word word word, word takes a while in the army to get out. Sometimes, like Korea yeah. has had Korea has had such a bad reputation for so many years, where I think they I think they have made probably some, and especially hearing when me and Chris have talked kind of offline. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's obvious they've made some, some pretty clear cut changes to how they do business over there to where yeah. it's not like the end of the fucking world being stationed, there, you know? So to be fair, like, uh, you know, in defense of those people who said those things about how much they hated this place, like they were here for the curfew. They were here for the mandatory midnight formations every Saturday. Yep. You know, that that's all gone now. Yeah. D- yeah, exactly. And that's like. When you let adults be adults, so believe it or not, sometimes they'll act like fucking adults and well, they, you know, they they their babysit them, you know? What they, what they realized with the curfew is that people were just, like, trying to get a smashed as fast as possible so they could get right. back on post. And right. now, you know, I mean, with COVID right now, everything still closes at 10 for the most right. part. But, I mean, people people are, for the most part, behaving. It's been It's been pretty easy over here. Good. Have you have you had have you experienced any especially especially as a you know middle rank NCO have you experienced any issues over there like with with any of your subordinates or even peers or uh, what, what is the if if there are any issues what do the issues tend to be um, the big one un- obviously everywhere underage drinking um, but it's it's Wait, easier here aren't they allowed to drink at eighteen in Korea yes but we're not like off post like if you have so a soldier. What? So more fucking retarded army rules. So you can. So we have to. We have so to follow can, American law. Yeah. That's yeah, fucking. That's we're just fucking stupid. But that's whatever. But things, yeah, but like, you know, like in the states, like if you're under, you know, if you're underage, it's somewhat difficult to get alcohol. You know. Yeah. Right. But I mean, here, yeah, exactly. it's a cab ride. And they walk off post and they just get it. I mean, I mean, well, you know, not not to not to drop any dimes here, Chris, but I mean how you and me met right so let's not let's not let's not go there right <laughs> like yeah. uh, let me, let me, let's be realistic though i mean we're talk, we're talking about a, a country that you can fucking vote and fucking die, go go and die in war at 18 but you can't fucking take a drink and in most of the country now you can't even fucking buy cigarettes until you're 21 
So you're old enough to fucking carry a gun and get shot in the fucking face, but you're not old enough to fucking make a decision to fucking drink. So, yeah. well, you know, what's wrong with this fucking picture? You know, I mean, so like it's it's weird here in Korea. So it's like uh, if you catch a soldier like underage drinking in the barracks, it's like, oh, you know, that's a problem. But I'm, I have a, a, a very close friend of mine. He's a friend who may have gone to a bar out in Seoul last weekend and ran into one of his soldiers at that <laughs> at that establishment. At that establishment, and he is uh, he is 20 years old, and my friend, you know, bought him a shot, made sure he got home safe. Okay. You know, I like I like your friend. I like your yeah. friend. You know what I mean? Like, what's your plan? Me and my girlfriend are staying at this hotel. You know. Right. So, my friend was smart about it. <laughs> your, friend, your, your, your friend, your friend sounds a lot a lot more reasonable than the policy. You know what I mean? That's like that's more what it should be. Is like, are are you safe? Are you are you okay? Yeah, you know how are you going to get home and just make sure you do it safely or text me when you get there or whatever. Like it's not. Uh, again, if you let adults act like adults, about ninety nine percent of the time you're going to get adults acting like adults. That one percent, you should not. You should not have to make a fucking rule because of the one percent that can't follow the fucking rules. You know what I mean? It's, no. it's not fucking. It's ridiculous. Like the army, and it, you know, in in some ways, Chris, like it almost makes me realize that like it probably is time for me to freaking ride off into the sunset and be done with my career because. I can't. I, I'm, I'm so terrible at following dumb rules. I, I fucking. I like legit suck at. Like if I don't agree with the rule, even after 11 years in the army, I'm like, this is fucking stupid. Like, for me, man, it's this new like promotion thing that they're doing. Oh god, dude, yeah. That. Oh, dude. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> two block. I have two top block NCOERs. One from like, like being the op sergeant when I was a staff sergeant. Like they they rated me across the company, man. No shit. Right. But because it like. I have battle staff, you know, MFT, but because yeah. I don't have drill, but because I don't have drill, even though I called an ass and they wouldn't give it to me. Right. 20 out of 38. You're, tw you're what? 20 out of 38. That's bullshit. And it, do you know what you, you want? You want to hear some more bullshit? You know, my number, I got, I got my number yesterday too. There's, mm -hmm. there were, there's 22, 2200, 2200, or 2,226 infantry guys on the list, right? I signed, a de I signed a deck statement like a year ago, like last fucking year. I signed a deck statement, which means that that basically tells the HRC and the Army, you're getting fuck, you're getting out, you're ETSing, right? Okay. I, my number is still 1,122. Yeah. And all I want to know is I'm like, who the fuck are the 1,100 dudes below me? What oh, the fuck did they, what the fuck did they do? Like, yeah. how, how the fuck, how the fuck did I, I ended up like dead in the middle of the list, like dead in the fucking middle. And I'm like, how in the fuck? How in the fuck is there 1,100 dudes below me? Like, I signed a fucking deck statement last year. Oh yeah. Like that's that's insanity. That is insanity. I, like, so I tried, I tried to go. I tried to go drill, and they were like, "No, you're on orders to Korea." I'm like, "Okay, I'll get through that." And then when I was here in Korea, I'm like, "Hey, I'd like to go drill now." They're like, "No, you're on orders somewhere else." And I'm like, "How much? How much time and grade do you have? Because that's that's about to change too." They're about so, to change. so that so that takes into effect one October. So I get fucked. I get four years, one September. Four years time in, as a staff sergeant? Sorry, yeah, time and grade. As, oh. In September? Yep. You, you made staff before I did? Yep. You did, didn't you? That's, yeah. Oh, that's right, because that's when I, when I fucking reclassed. You're right. You're right. Yeah. That's fucking right. That's badass, dude. God, I'm so yeah. proud of you. Shit. <laughs> I used to call, I used to call, I used to joke, Jonathan, I used to call Chris like the all-American kid. Yeah, 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 he's like fucking from like you know like sweet little fucking like patriotic little hometown. Like he's got he's got his fucking high school sweetheart. You know, like just yeah. this this dude like does everything right. Like he's fucking beautiful. You're 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 truly a Captain America. He fucking yeah. is, dude. You got the he's haircut got, too, man. You got the haircut too. He mar he mar he, mar he married his high school sweetheart. Like they're, they're they have a wonderful fucking like home life, dude. Like their their kid is fucking amazing and fucking beautiful in his own right. Like. <laughs> This dude, this dude, like can't fucking miss. He's like fucking, he's like fucking Schwarzenegger, dude. Like with with like a layup in life, you know what I mean? It's just like just kind of like, <laughs> like just layups, dude. A layup, layup in shit, life, like, easy. That's great. Easy shit, time, right? Hey, the next time I'm fully clothed in my bathtub, crying, I'm gonna call you and I need you to tell me that again. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time, was it? Would it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's like everyone else, man. I filled the tub up with water, get in there fully clothed, cry, light a candle. <laughs> hey, the candles are a nice touch, though. That's what really sets the mood. Yeah, it is. It is. So not to, not to, um, 
I guess dampen kind of like what what we're, what we're going on about. But I had a question for you, Chris. Um, not 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 so much in regards to your MOS, but as an active duty soldier, I think a lot of times people don't necessarily understand or appreciate what we do actually sacrifice. And it doesn't really matter if we're talking about going down range on a deployment or just being away from family or whatever. What has been some of the things? What has been the hardest part for you? being in the army, being active duty in the army, whether you were junior enlisted as an NCO, like your whole career, whatever, like NTC, all that shit. What are, what are the hard, what are the hard parts for you? Are the hard parts, some of the, like like, what, what's hard for you? Or like, what, what did you not expect when you got in the army? You are like, man, this fucking actually does kind of suck. Like I'm, I'm hurting right now. Like whatever, in whatever regard. Um, man, that's actually, that's a really good question. That's hard. So for me, like, like distance, distance is difficult but it will never be as hard as like that initial goodbye. Like, yeah. like when I hugged my son goodbye and like I had to let him go, like that was like, like that was still probably the hardest moment out of this whole like being away from them and all that stuff. So it's like, it's not really the distance, but the goodbyes, that that's the hardest. I mean, that that's always, you know, it's kind of a cliche answer, but. Um, I, yeah, yeah. That's the truth. Uh, I'd, I'd say like, like professionally, I'd say sometimes, uh, especially like at the rank, you know, we're at now it is, you know, you know, that expression like help. I need an adult. Yeah. It's like, Oh crap. I am the adult. I'm the adult. Yeah, that's I'm right. Out, or else like heads are going to roll much higher than mine. Um, I'd say that, I'd say that was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. Okay. Um, realizing that the, uh, you know, where that, where that hammer lands, it doesn't land on you. It lands on all those people above you and how that was down like i just you, that's one of those things you don't really think into until you're there do you remember uh do you remember when we were when we were junior listed and we would at, at certain times not every day obviously we, we were actually in a pretty good company but at certain times we'd be shit talking some of the ncos because they were just you, you could never find them they were never around and oh then, yeah and then, yeah. and then and then and then and then you make the rank and then you make the rank and realize it was they they weren't it wasn't that they weren't around because they were trying to hide they weren't around because they were dealing with other shit fucking behind mm-hmm. the scenes that we didn't fucking have a clue of you know what i mean so it wasn't it wasn't that they were bad ncos they were just yeah they were they were probably you know getting getting shoot out on the carpet somewhere because fucking so-and-so fucked up or why, why is this like this you know whatever the one thing that i've always tried to uh try to do as an nco that i hated you know when when i was uh junior enlisted was you know we we you know i definitely had that attitude where i'm like hey you know here we are where the fuck are you you know what I mean? So, but now I'm in that position. So sometimes I have an E5 where it's like, hey, you know, where the fuck are you? I can say, go fuck yourself. I'm a staff sergeant. Or I can say, hey, look, this is what I'm doing. And this is why I'm doing it. And one day you're going to have to do it too. Right. So that's kind of one thing that I always try to do is kind of stay calm and just, hey, you know what? Just be upfront. This is exactly what I was doing. This yeah. is why I was doing it. This is what not just me, we have to deal with. You know what I mean? I used to tell uh, that to my, I used to tell that to my junior enlisted soldiers, um, on the line when in the infantry was like, I was like, I understand I haven't been around a lot this week. It's because of freaking X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Take all, t- you know, talk to your team leader, take all orders from the tower. I will be here as, as often as I possibly can be. But in the army, you can't say that you don't do windows. So they tell you fucking go down to this fucking office or go do this one thing or go perform this task or whatever. You don't get to say no. Yeah, but then, but then, but then it kind of makes you look like a shit bag because then your fucking squad doesn't know where the fuck you're at, and they don't really have a need to know, so you don't tell them where you're at. You know what I mean? It's like more like, you know, Sergeant So and So is going to take over for the day because I got to go do this thing. Yeah, so, well, yeah. We we grew up hearing that. Remember, it was it was like, uh, uh, what, uh, what did they say? You know, uh, freaking, oh, you, like you're not allowed to ask why. You're going to do what you're told, regardless. It's like. Right. Like, if you're going to tell me to do something, give me, give, you know, give me the benefit of telling me what, what's going on. Give me the purpose. <laughs> I actually, I actually, I actually instruct my students at, at BL, excuse me, at BLC. I tell them that it's okay to give your soldiers a little bit of the why. Yeah. I, not- I noticed over time, especially with the current generation of soldiers, the current generation of soldiers is not softer. They're not any worse than any generations that preceded them, but they grew up with fucking technology. Yeah. They grew up they grew up with the entire history of the world and all its fucking knowledge in their pockets. They want to know fucking why. Now granted, there there's there's going to be times in the army where you got to shut up in color. 
Just right. go, go, go do it. I'll explain it later. You know, just go. We don't, we don't, we're on a, we're on a time crunch right now, yeah. but if you've got an extra 30 seconds, give them like a little crumb of the why, give them a little yeah. slice of the pie. If you tell, if you tell soldiers from this current generation, a little bit of the why they will literally fucking storm the gates of hell and they will kick in the fucking door when you I tell them that and all, and all they want to do is know why. If you just give them a little bit of the why, they will fucking go like 100 miles an hour screaming at it. They don't care. Yeah. They just want to yeah. know fucking why. And in the old army, even the army, even the army that me and Chris kind of came up in, it was still fucking don't ask questions, just fucking do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was like and and Chris Chris had a couple of hard-nosed in, in, NCOs. I remember yeah. when I remember when Chris was when Chris was like first in the unit. I I just gotten back from my first deployment in, Af- in Afghanistan. And I transferred over to this unit that Chris was in, and I remember a couple of his NCOs, and they were pretty hard nosed about shit. They were they were when I say old army, they were like old school army, yeah. like like fucking it, you know if you piss them off enough, you're gonna fucking we're gonna go out to the fucking wood line or behind one of the fucking connexes and fucking handle it right. And didn't didn't happen very often, but I know I know behind fucking closed doors it fucking happened a few times while we were there, and this is and this is going this is recent as two thousand what. 13, 14, Chris, time yeah. frame. Yeah. yeah. Like, this was um, not, this, was, this in, in, in the Army's history, this was not very long ago. And it's no. only been in the last, like, four or five years, the, the culture has started to shift and the, the philosophy of leadership has started to change to where Jesus Christ, is it going to fucking kill you to just tell somebody why? Yeah. Like, it's, you're not on this hardcore time crunch. Like, just give them a, give them a little bit. You know what I mean? Like, it's not, it's not any sweat off your sack. Yeah. Go ahead, John. And I, and, and I respect that so much because... You know, go, I, I got to say, you know, growing up in New Jersey, there's a lot of things that I didn't see, know, or even knew even existed when I came into the Army. For example, right. why am I supposed to take, you know, why am I supposed to take the pin out of a weapon when I'm cleaning it? You know, I asked that question. It was explained to me. Okay, now I understand. Right, yeah. You know, why am I supposed to have my uniform a, a, couple, a couple inches this way? Or why am I supposed to have the top folded and not, you know, all zipped up? Right. Things like that, you know, and I and I think the new generation, you know, like you said, they grew up with the technology. So they want they want to understand why. Right. Why are they doing this the way that the army wants them to do it? You know, it's like oh, the, the, the army wants you to eat spaghetti with a spoon. Why? We'll tell you why. And then you're going to do it. You know, it's that. Yeah. You know, law of the land. I, and, and I respect that completely. The um, the absolute worst, the absolute worst answer an NCO or a leader could ever give one of their subordinates is because I said so. Yeah. That, is the, that is the worst fucking answer. And it's, it's such a fucking cop out. And it's such a, it's, it's such a sign of unqualified and bad leadership. If you can't take time out of your day to mentor and coach and train your subordinates, you don't fucking deserve your position. Absolutely. Well, the thing is too, it's, like, it's, it's not that like, it's a very hard thing to do. Like those opportunities present themselves all the time. Most people just don't take advantage of them. That's like, right. so, like quick example, like we're in the middle of changing command layouts. And oh, that's always fun. That's always <laughs> yeah. Fun. Right, so like, so we so we did everything, put everything back up. You know, the other platoon did it, put everything back up. A few days later, the other platoon found. Uh, you remember the remote boxes? Yes, I do. Yes, so I do. They, they had found one that they were missing. So oh. came down the pipe. Hey, the whole company needs to relay out their remote boxes so the new commander can double check to make sure that they didn't just move one. You know what I mean? Right. But all the soldiers here is, hey, now we have to relay out the remote boxes. Right, right. That's all down to them, right? So we sat there and we, like, we, while we were waiting, we showed them the bombs, you know, showed them exactly how layouts work, why we had to do all that. Yep. And, you know, were they pissed off we had to stay till 1900? Of course. But at least they got why. It wasn't exactly. just, hey, not the remote boxes, I'm going to smoke. You know what I mean? Exactly. Exactly. Like, all stuff like that, like, it makes a world of difference. And Chris... You know, it always did when I was younger. That's, yeah. that's it. It, it. Well, and, it, and you're exactly right. It does help. And now, Chris, um, the 12 Charlie MOS is, I don't want to, you know, it's it's a somewhat unique MOS. Okay, so you're part of the Engineer Corps, but it is considered a combat arms MOS. Yes. And that's something that a lot of people don't quite realize. And it was also a historical factoid for you, Jonathan, because I know you like Army history. Uh, the 12 Charlie MOS was one of the first. It was one of the. It was a. It was among the first group of groupings of, of MOSs that integrated females into combat arms. 
And so by the time by the time I got to the Fantastic. unit that me and Chris me, me and Chris were in the in together, there was a there was a very healthy smattering of female female engineers uh, in in the ranks. Um, and it was really cool to it was say that again say it again. But- Fucking badasses too. There, there, there. We, me and Chris have known quite a few. Uh, where it was like, holy shit! Like, this, the, the, this little lady is giving me a fucking run for my goddamn money. You know what I mean? That's um, awesome. It, it really is. It, it was. It was. I grew. I grew up in co-ed MOSs. Obviously, being a mechanic, so like mechanics has always been co-ed, or it's been co-ed for a long fucking time. Uh, I went to co-ed basic training. Went to co-ed AIT. You know, when I deployed though. Uh, the only females on my deployment were were freaking you know admin you know and, the, and a couple of mechanics you know nothing wrong nothing wrong with that. I go back to Fort Leonard Wood after I after I got back home from Afghanistan and I get to this twelve Charlie unit and it's like there was females in every squad just about like there was at least one female in every squad there were fe- there were female squad leaders female section sergeants you know like the whole nine going all the way up the ranks and it was really cool to see these hard charging female soldiers, you know, where it was like, you, you know, because everybody makes the fucking argument and it was well, when me and Chris were coming up, it was an argument. It's not really an argument anymore. Yeah. Now you know, we got like fucking, we got female Rangers. We got the the very first fucking That's female fucking Green Beret. Badass, yo. Yeah, the, the very first female Green Beret has, has she has officially passed the queue. They have yeah. not, they have not, they have not released her name yet, but there is a female Green Beret out there now, you know, and it, it's fucking badass to see that shit. It really fucking is. And it's, it's very heartening to know that, if you're a female, you could do and this you, too. And you hear you hear that calling. You've got that calling in your heart. You can fucking do it too. You know, yeah. just be, just because just because you know you're, you're you're a female does not mean you can't. Absolutely. You, I, yeah. Go ahead, John. Yeah, go ahead. It, it's it's so cool that you say that too because my daughter, uh, you know, I I play you know play Call of Duty, you know, all Red Dead, and you know I so. She'll see a couple of the characters. Some of the operators are females in Call of Duty, and she'll be, and one day she asked me. She was like, "Is that is that is that a girl, Daddy?" I'm like, "Yeah." She was like, "Girls could do that too." I'm like, "Yeah, girls could do anything they want." Yeah, you know, right. Th- this is the world that we live in now, and you know, it's it's nice. It's nice to see that you know, especially you know, she looked up and she was just like, "I could do that. I could be a badass. I could hold a weapon and beat bad guys too, or I could play yeah. baseball." Or it's right. it's. It's great. It's great, and it's all about the influence. So that that green beret is is going to be breaking the mold for a lot of oh, absolutely future females yeah. that want to go into the go into the special they, forces. It's amazing. They exist. They exist, and they are fucking out there. And and there's no reason in the world we should ever crush their fucking souls and their dreams. You know, just because just because they happen to be born with something a little bit different between their legs. You know what I yeah. mean? It's 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 really ridiculous. Like we're really doing ourselves a disservice by not assisting them, you know, and making them better, you know, and and getting them getting the because the uh, first sergeant me and Chris were referring to earlier, me, you know, this is back when I was a mechanic and I was all hua hua high speed in my early thirties. <laughs> I would I was I've repeatedly asked for schools in this unit repeatedly, you yeah. know, air, give me give me aerosol, give me fucking sapper because we, we we literally worked across the street from the sapper leaders course at Fort Leonard Wood. Which is the you know the Ooh. engineers yeah yeah so and so we would we would go to PT and we would see the, the the sapper candidates you know carrying carrying the zodiac boats you know with a with the sapper instructor like standing up in the back of it yelling at them on a megaphone while it's like a downpour torrential downpour in Fort Leonard Wood you know we 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 went to PT like watching this shit all the time yeah and then so I'm I'm a I'm a mechanic and this first sergeant this is what probably this poor first sergeant, like he, he's he's getting all the negative reviews today, right? But there's other there's other times there's, yeah. there's, there's there's other times I assure I assure you guys, like there's other times he was he was a badass and he was very good at his job. He he made sergeant major. Is he still at Fort Hood, by the way? Do you know? Um, I know so, he was at one I point, so, but he was like on his way out. Like he was like the sergeant major of like I don't know, like like a smaller contingent. Wow. Yeah, wasn't yeah. part of a unit anymore. He was just kind of yeah. But yeah, but this this same first sergeant pulled me aside one day, and he was like, he was like, he was like, Cam- he's like, Campbell, listen, man, the, the army, the army doesn't need air assault qualified mechanics. The army, the, ar- <laughs> the army doesn't need sapper tab mechanics. Now, my, now, mind you, what this first sergeant didn't know is when I went when I went to AIT to become a mechanic, my squad leader, my E six squad leader in AIT, was a fucking sapper tab mechanic. So when I was a baby private, all I had was stars in my eyes, and I, all I wanted to do was 
more for the army, right? Like, send me to fucking schools. Like, let me be fucking high speed, right? And thank God, thank God I was in my... Yeah, thank I won't God. say his name. I just remember who it was, though. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's like, yeah, yeah. And, and freaking, that, and that's like, you know, when you, when you, when you're 18, 19, 20 years old, that can fucking crush you. That can, like, that, like having a conversation like that with a, a senior leader can really, like, crush your dreams. Thank God I was in my fucking 30s and I didn't give a fuck what he thought, <laughs> you know? Like, thank God. <laughs> But if I'd been like an 18, 19, 20 year old kid, like, hey, you're just a mechanic. You're just a mechanic. That's all I ever heard from yeah. a lot of the senior leader. A, lo a lot of the senior leaders at Leonardwood at the time were very old school in their mentality. You're just a fucking mechanic. You're just fucking support. You know, like you're you're you you don't fucking matter. We just you turn wrenches when we say basically, and that's really not like the way it should be. It's like in the infantry, it's like Absolutely. if I had a combo, if I had a combo soldier or a supply soldier, and they want to go to fucking ranger school. Fucking send that motherfucker, because when that fucking asshole comes back from fucking ranger school with a tab, I'm going to look at my fucking infantry, man, and be like, motherfuckers, why the fuck don't you have that now? There's yeah. your fucking, there's, there's your fucking supply sergeant, there's your fucking commo, there's your commo guy, and he's got a fucking tab. What the fuck is your excuse? You know what I mean? Absolutely. Why would you not, why would you not make that like a, another teachable moment where we will send our fucking support soldiers to these schools? Because if you want it, it's out there. I know a lot you know? of cooks. I know a lot of cooks that did it, you know. And even you know, I there's ranger cooks, there's airborne yep. cooks. You know that you know there's it's, different. We just we just we just graduate. I just graduated a cook from my class uh, this last Friday, and I literally told this dude, I was like, I was like, I won't say his name, but I was like, I was like, I was like, if you don't if you don't fucking drop a packet and go to RASP. I was like, you are doing yourself and the army a disservice. You need, you need, to, you need to do more because you could tell. Like, even though we're doing video, video BLC, like we're on video like this, like we are right now, I could tell this kid's fucking high speed. I could tell this kid is this kid's going place. He's a fucking, he's a fucking cook, but by God, he is going place. He wants to do more, you know. And I was like, go do fucking more. I'm like, encouraging this dude, like, go do more. And I just you want know? to add, a, as a ranger cook. I've I've been to I've been to one Ranger DFAC in Fort Benning, and let mm -hmm. me tell you, the Rangers lead the way with the cooking, man. Let me tell you, they come in, you, you go you go into those Ranger DFACs, and it's like going into a buffet. Let me tell you, you know you you, you know you're not going there, putting the food in their plate like it. And so if you're where, a cook, you want to be a Ranger cook. Where did you where did you say that was at Fort Benning? Yeah, okay. I went to, uh, I don't remember if it was a Ranger one. It may have been like a Special Forces one at Campbell when I was there for aerosol school. Oh, and holy yeah. crap. We were like, what the heck? Do we just walk into, like, are we even allowed yeah. here? <laughs> Why BAS for this? <laughs> it's, it, it's interesting. And like the, you know, the thank, you know, the Thanksgiving, the Thanksgivings are just fantastic. And Oh yeah, yeah. A, a, part, a part of me misses it. A part of me misses it. Um, I do, I do have a question though. So you had mentioned earlier that you had applied for drill sergeant that yes okay so I, well, I i always thought that you always needed a special you know a special passionate kind of mind in order to teach the future of of the army so what what is it about the about new boots that in, intrigue you to help them do better to 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 be the guy to instruct them into a, a better army so if there's uh there's one thing that i can definitely like with a sound mind say that i'm good at it's teaching so regardless of if it's like BLC or ALC or something, it's teaching. What I have a hard time teaching is what I give uh, Campbell like credit to. He's teaching soldiers who already have bad habits. You know what I mean? So uh, being being a uh, drill sergeant, basic training, I kind of I got to I get to scratch that itch of like teaching that new generation and at the same time. Like, you know, for, for the most part, you know, they, they all raise their hand willingly. And, you know, I'd say I'd say about 90 percent of them are, are there to learn. You know, you're going to have your shitheads. But yeah. for the most, you know, you can teach the uh, the new guys right the first time. And then hopefully it just kind of sticks as they go on. You know, so that's I think that's, I think that's where it kind of stands. I think and I think, too, I, I, I really need to add on to this. Me and Chris at the time, we probably didn't realize it. But we, me and Chris were very, very fortunate you know, when you get when you when you're an AIT or OSIT in Chris's in Chris's uh, respect, if you're an AIT or OSIT and you get orders to the same exact duty station that you do all your training on, it seems like a really shitty thing. So me and Chris got stationed at Fort Leonard Wood. You know, it's a trade. It's mainly a trade post, and we ended up in a force com a force com unit in a trade fucking in a in the middle of a trade post. 
The the upside of that though is where all that where all that trade doc bullshit, all the training bullshit bleeds over into our formation. We grew up with we grew up with a lot of good habits. Yeah. A lot of habits where somebody graduates from Fort Benning or graduates from Fort Leonard Wood per se, and then they go to X or Y unit, you know, wherever else around the United States or possibly the world. And maybe that unit is like just tore up from the floor up. Like all those good habits go fucking gone. They're gone. By the time they finish their time at that duty station, they're gone. And then they go to the next duty station. And maybe by this time they're senior specialist or God forbid, they've already made fucking sergeant and they fucking suck. They just fucking suck. They have like, they have no, they have no military bearing, no professionalism. They think fucking screaming, screaming at soldiers is the way to be. It's just, it's really not, you know, and that's by me and Chris growing up at Fort Leonard Wood, becoming NCOs down the road, I think it's really, really helped us a lot by maintaining some of those, like, like the very base foundational level, you know, army shit, basically. Like we never, we're way more squared away than some of our peers, as much as it pains me to say that we're way more squared away with some of the base level stuff. We might not be the best of the best of the best in our MOS. Okay, whatever. Cool story, bro. But I, I'm way fucking better than you at fucking counseling my soldiers. I'm way fucking better than you at keeping my fucking team and my squad squared away. You know what I mean? I'm not the one. I'm not the one fucking dealing with fucking three shitheads that I can't fucking control because I'm I'm just a fucking asshole to them all the time. You know what I mean? So it, I think it's it's you know food for thought. And Leonard Leonard Wood did kind of grow on me after a while. Like I I do kind of miss it sometimes. So yeah. So. I- I, I've said that to my wife before. Like, I really wish that when we had first got married, I wish my first duty station was was Hood, just because like that's where the um, Texas is just awesome. You know, Hood sucks, but <laughs> Texas is cool. And then like now that we have the kid and everything, we're not going out as much. Like Leonard Wood's like just that place. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's fantastic. Leonard Wood, that right. chicken bone closed down and Big Louie. I heard about. It. I heard about. It. I heard yeah. about. It. We'll have now, to. Uh, one of these days, we'll have to go back to uh, Fort Leonard Wood, Chris, and uh, we'll have an ice cream social or something, you know? Have, have an ice cream, an ice cream social. I like it. Yeah, that's, that's, it's kind of an inside joke. <laughs> oh. Okay. Oh. Hey, yeah. So, yeah. so I, as last, <laughs> last, last time I checked, um, there was only four, four stations, and I know it's not the four stations that, that do boot camp. Out of the, or maybe there's more, I'm, I forget sometimes, but... Out of those four, I know it's not up to you. Is there one that that you would feel comfortable in doing being a, a drill sergeant in? Um, so either really doesn't really matter any of them besides Leonard Wood, and it's not really <laughs> it's it's not really that I hate Leonard Wood. It's just I've been there more more just yeah. like I, I'd I go see something else. So Fort Jackson, Fort Benning, I'd be with it. See, when I was on when I was on drill orders, uh, I was on drill sergeant orders last year, John. Before I before I signed my deck statement. Oh shit! And I was actually I was on orders for Fort Jackson, but I was when I was oh baby. At the at the time, I had it in my head that if I was able to go to drill sergeant school and try to stay in the army, I was going to try to make a drug deal at Fort Jackson so I could go back to Leonard Wood. Yeah. Like I was actually going to try to go back to Fort Leonard. Like all the all the infantry guys want to go, obviously, to Fort Benning. Yeah. To be infantry drill sergeants, I wanted to go back and give give a little bit back to the place that helped me start my career. You know, because I remember when I was in basic training, we had I, I was I was just in BCT. I was not in an OSUT, right? I was a mechanic, so I just did basic training there. But in basic training, we all had there was one infantry infantry drill sergeant per platoon. And I remember the infantry, the infantry drill sergeants were the tip. Typically the infantry drill sergeants were the ones that like motivated everybody, kept everybody kind of like with their heads on, on a swivel. And all they, all they asked for was a little bit of discipline and compliance. They didn't have, they weren't, they weren't being dicks just for the sake of being dicks for the most part. You know, there was, there was a, there's always a couple shitheads, but, but the infantry drill sergeants were the ones that were, they were leading the way. They were like, this is how it's fucking done. You know what I mean? And it kept all of us privates, you know, our uh, little fucking recruits fucking, you know, motivated. And it was really cool. And I, I wanted to give a little bit back. But unfortunately, it just didn't work out for me. So I signed a deck statement and I ETS in October. So, <laughs> well, I think I could de- I could definitely see like the two different styles of of drill. I could definitely like see it like yeah. the different styles that you guys would have. But I could already tell that you guys would be great drill sergeants i i think i, I think i was lucky because i i did i did boot camp in 2012 in the end of 2012 going into 2013 so it was still kind of fresh but i think i was lucky enough to 
have some great instructors during that time and even the ones that i felt i was just like man this guy's a piece of shit you know they, they turn out to be you know the ones that that you learn from the most so i think it, it's it's yeah. a, you know it's when i say you have you got to have a, a a very passionate mind to, to to teach these youngsters or in some cases you know because we had a guy in in my boot camp who was 41 years old who transferred from the air force mm. and yep. and and uh took a loss of rank too for to to switch yeah. over to the army too uh you know the it, it it's it's an interesting it's an interesting occupation to have in the military and i think it's very special and i that was actually one thing that i really wanted to do and you know it you know things just didn't go as planned the way that that you want them sometimes but you know that, that that's very i think it's a very honorable work to do to be a drill sergeant yeah you know and all in all you know in all in all what are we down to five five now uh armed forces now so six oh, yeah. Space Six. Force. Shit. Space Force. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's hilarious. No. Let's, uh, why don't we uh, segue over to a little bit of gaming? Yeah, oh, yeah. God. Yeah, so are, you, are, so are, you, play, are you playing anything? Uh, me or Jay? Chris. You. Chris. Chris. You. Oh, so I'm currently playing the, uh, the, the new Mass Effect remake. Oh. Like legendary trilogy, yep. What's um, a, I, what's, a, what system do you use, Chris? The PS5. I got the new uh, the new one. You got one. You got yes. one. My how is it? Somehow scored it and sent it over here. So I, t I told you, John. This dude, dude, all American kid right here, dude. Like, his old lady, his old Teammates, lady scored him a man. You hear that? You hear that? Yeah, yeah. It's a teammate. But, uh, I'm telling you. I'll tell you one thing. The thing is a uh, it's a monster. It's pretty big, but it is. Uh, it's quiet. The new controller is like, I really can't, like, you can't describe it. Like, you just got to feel it. Like, you're walking around in a game and it's raining. Like, you feel, like, all over your palm, like, the rain drops. What? That's, that's yeah, like, special. On certain PS5, yeah. And then, like, the triggers, like, they'll say, like, you're pulling, like, a bow and arrow or something. Like, the trigger will, like, get hard until, like, you pull the bowstring back and what? then release. Yeah. <laughs> It's it's stupid cool. That shit. Damn Microsoft, yeah. what are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah. Like guns with like recoil will like make your 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 finger like twitch. <laughs> Crap, dude. Yeah. So, so that's pretty cool. So you're playing like a game of Call of Duty and you're trying to shoot someone and you miss someone. There's actually a good reason why you miss them then. Yeah, so like most games have the ability like you can shut it off if it's bothering you, but I, I keep it on. It's cool. It's neat. Yeah. What are are there are there any I guess games that have been released yet that are really cool, or have you like how like what all of you kind of like jumped into the deep waters of on the PS5 oh, so far? I know I know it's kind of fresh, but no. So I got uh I played the new Spider Man. The new Spider Man was good, uh, really really good. I like, enjoyed it. What I really liked was the was the uh, the Demon Souls remake that they did. I heard that. One now that game, good. yeah. It, have you played like the older one? Yeah. See I, see, I had never played it, so I went into this, like, with a fresh mind, and, like, it really is, like, that next-gen thing that, like, when you die, it's it's not as frustrating, because there's no loading screen. Like, you die, it shows a cloud, cloud goes away, you're back. In, like, two seconds. Huh. As Jay would like, say, that, it doesn't feel cheap. There you go. Uh, so, it, I mean, I think I talked to Jay about it before. It's one of those games that he uh, should not play. For his TV's <laughs> controller's sake, but uh, you know, it's, uh, I, I enjoyed it. What I'm having a hard time enjoying is that new one, uh, Returnal, that came out. I don't yeah, know if yeah, you guys yeah. heard anything about that. Yeah, so Returnal is like that game takes like the new functions like of the controller to the max. So I keep going back to it, but I can't get past fucking level two. <laughs> Holy crap! <laughs> Holy crap! Dude, so like you'll you'll play level one, right? You get halfway through level one, you die, you lose out everything, your guns, everything that you have, you start back at level one. The fuck? Oh hell no. So you get so like the the levels they're uh what is it called? Uh procedurally generated, so they switch up a little bit every time. So it keeps it fresh. Um so you know, you get to the end of level one, you you find the boss. Fuck yeah, you die. 
Start back at the beginning of level one. Oh, shit. Uh, okay, cool. Let's do this again. <laughs> now, it does, now it, it does have to, like, do with the story. Like, you, you crash and land on this planet, and, like, this, she's, like, reliving this, like, Groundhog Day scenario. And, like, every time you go through, you kind of find, like, a new puzzle piece on why the hell this is happening. Um, but to, to continue... You beat the boss, you get to level two, you get halfway through level two, and you die. You go to the beginning of level one. What? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, hell to the, hell to the fuck no. Right. Not only that, you lose whatever weapons you found, your upgrades, all that. So now, I will say, when you go through level one again to get back to level two, it is, like, significantly shorter. They put a little thing at the beginning of level two that brings your weapon right back to where you had it level wise okay uh, but the, I, I, the problem with the game is that the levels are so long that um, sometimes you're just like I don't I don't want to do this again like right, right. Like, like still in it but you need a few hours or even like a day or two right like I, but I keep going back to it, it, it it's like a you know I'm not dogging it's a phenomenal game it's just the design I'm like I don't know if I'm in it but yeah John, uh, John, for a little bit of uh, history between between uh, me and Chris, um, we would I would go over to his. We used to live like in the, in the barracks, like across the street from each other at Leonard Wood, and I would literally just go over there with like a couple of tall boys and just watch him play. Like he would be. He, he, I remember uh, the Last of Us when the Last of Us came. Out. Last yeah. of the, the Last of Us came out. I watched him play like that whole fucking game, and then uh, they when they did uh, Undead Nightmare for uh, Red Dead Redemption. Me and Chris literally we that spent was so like, fun by the way. That we was spent, so like, fun. We spent an entire day, like we had like a snow day or some shit. And we spent like <laughs> we spent like ten hours straight just watching Bro. I was just watching Chris go through Undead Nightmare and like <laughs> fucking that was that was I'll never forget that fucking weekend because it was a four day weekend. Oh, was it and, a four day? Okay. And no, no, two days before that, we it fucking dumped snow on Fort Leonard Wood. So we ended up having a six day. Right, that's right. That's what it was. And remember, and remember, we fucking we made a, uh, what was it? The crock pot with the tea oh, in the, the bottom. Fucking a Wolverine, 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 Wolverine six. six, Wolverine yeah. six. We called we, we made we made a drink. We made a drink. We made we made a drink. We made a drink and, and uh, named it in honor of my my very first battalion was the ninety fourth engineer battalion, and we were the Wolverine. So Wolverine six was obviously the, the battalion commander. Yeah. But we had this we had this drink for snow days and it was uh, Chinese herbal tea with honey, brown sugar, and vodka, and you would, and it was and you served it warm. So it was like it was like a it was it was a it was a drink for a snow day basically. Like when you got like a snow day, it was a drink I just for a snow day. A crock pot. So we just made a whole fucking pile of it and we That's just drank fun. it all. It like undead nightmare. So you guys yeah. made like like the barracks equivalent to jail hooch, basically. basically. Oh god. Out of it, like we made a lot of shit, Joe Hooch. Then <laughs> <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah. Keep, 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 keep that recipe close. Keep that recipe yeah. close. You know, yeah. you never know. That that's interesting. Snow days, man. Uh, no, I was in Fort Benning. We didn't. Well, actually, no. We we had one snow day in Fort Benning, and it snowed two inches. I, right. I, I'm used to, you know, you guys are used to mounds and mounds. I'm used to mounds and mounds. I'm from New Jersey, and I remember driving, and it was just flurries, and I get into work, and my NCO's like, what are you doing here? I'm like, I'm, I'm here to work. I'm back from yeah. my appointment. I'm here to work. He goes, are you crazy? He goes, you need to go back home. It's it's a blizzard out there. And I walk, <laughs> and I looked outside. I'm like, this, I'm like, there's not even any snow on the ground. I'm like, <laughs> I'm, like I'm just going to go home. He was like, yeah, just go home. I'm like... <laughs> I'm not. I'm, I'm not from too far away. Uh, I'm from New Hampshire, so. Oh, so you you know, man. Yeah, this the snow is thing. killer, man. Yeah. The snow, I, it, like, we've had days off because they're like it's gonna snow and then it freezing rains like a quarter of an inch. <laughs> I'm like, all right. It, it, it's incredible to me how how some how some states, specifically the South, they don't they don't know how to handle a lot of snow. Like Atlanta. Um, what, yeah. 2014, baby. End of 2013? End of 2013, it snowed. You know, there were cars abandoned on I-95. People leaving <laughs> their cars on the road. It was a, it was a, it was a mess. I, incredible, absolutely incredible. Me yeah. snows up here. We go over there. And we start making, we start making barbecues. I mean, it's, right? 
There's a there's a picture somewhere floating around Facebook. Uh, me doing a snow angel, in my boxers. You remember yeah, that's that, on, Jay? That's on my Facebook. Thank you. I took that picture. Your I Facebook. I took that picture. That's on my Facebook. Why, why, yeah, do so I feel, why do I feel like you shared that not too long ago? Did you? Uh, I don't know. That I, did. I don't know that I did, but yeah, that was that was. You, that oh, was I think I think when I was up. when I was looking through your hero pictures, I think I may have stumbled across. <laughs> I was like, uh, yeah, like that was that was Private Bodet and Specialist yeah. Campbell fucking hanging out fucking on a snow day at Fort Leonard Wood. <laughs> I love the snow, man. I'll go do a fucking I'll go do a, a snow angel naked right now. You're like no ball. <laughs> Like, I'm a New England kid. Watch this. When I was... <laughs> Famous last well, words. Hey, check this out. <laughs> so, I love the snow. So you're from the New England area, so are you Are you a Boston Red Sox fan? I am. Oh, f- cancel the show. It's over. Yeah, John, John, yeah. It's John, over. We're done. John's a fucking Yankees fan, so... <laughs> uh, just to segue back into gaming, I, I watched your episode where you were talking about the show. <laughs> What the, did. Are you playing it? I, I, I a bit, yeah. What, what do you think? So I, we we all have like this uh, mutual agreement on this that the new show is a better baseball simulator than Madden is a football simulator. That's that is, that's a very interesting take. Absolutely, like that absolutely. The best way to describe it. Um, so I've I've been a PlayStation. Uh, you remember like the PSP back in the day? Absolutely. So that was that was the first game of the show that I ever had, and uh, back when I was a you know, twelve thirteen year old boy, I'd go drop a deuce and play a nine inning game. <laughs> uh, you know, my mom was probably like, "Hey, he's spending a lot of time in the bathroom. I wonder, you know, he's going yeah. through his time." Little did she know her loop, <laughs> trying to throw out fucking Derek Jeter at second, Jason Baratek, you know. <laughs> She probably thought you were uh, discovering discovering your, uh, your your new body, right? But, uh, but, yeah, but you, were nope. just, you were just playing fucking video games. <laughs> you fucking trying, to pick, trying to pick up a rod at second. <laughs> yeah. and, 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 you know, a lot of people, you know, I've, I've been seeing a lot of people, like, I see a lot of Xbox players say, oh, yeah, it's the best baseball game, you know, because we, we don't yeah. have a lot. We have Super Mega Baseball, which is the most cartoony right. baseball game ever, but it worked. But I see yeah. a lot of people all oh, like the only reason why you guys are saying it's the best is because you know you guys never had a baseball game. But I beg to differ. I just think as a baseball fan, this the, yeah. it makes the game fun. I mean, I think I, co- I I'm already at like four days worth of of play in the game, and which is which is crazy too because I have a friend of mine who's above me in the in the leaderboards who has 17 yeah. days of gameplay, which I don't know what he's oh. not doing in his world <laughs> around him, but. <laughs> You know, no, so I was playing it. I was playing it, and I kind of like gave up, almost not gave up on it, but so I bought it. My friends and I were playing. We even started a league. We were all gonna put in twenty bucks, and whoever won. Oh, I like but that. At that point, it was just gonna be everyone picks a, a team, and we all you know play the brackets. Whoever wins gets the money. Well, I started playing that Returnal game, so I you know I took a break from that. Yeah. And then yeah. Resident Evil came out, so then I had to play that. But then. Once, how, how is Resident Evil? I'm, I'm very, I, I, I'm, I'm waiting. I'm waiting to get it. Oh, it's. I, I played it in a day and a half, and I like damn near 100 percent of it. But I like, I love seven. Shit. Yeah, like that. It's, but, but it's not as difficult to do as you think it is. Yeah. But I mean, it's, it's like that perfect like I'm gonna drink beer and play this this weekend game. You know, games are getting like, like you gotta play 70, 80, 90 hours to. Yeah. It is like the perfect like, hey, it's raining this weekend. Let's play the let's play the new Resident Evil. It's like that perfect game. I like that. I, I like that a lot because a lot of Resi- the old, a lot of the older Resident Evil games were like that. You know, my favorite you know my favorite ones were one and two. They weren't exactly, yeah. you know, super long, but they were you know a good weekend a good weekend ender. So I I, I like hearing I like hearing that this new Resident Evil game is like that. I I hear a lot of great things about. It. I watch a lot of streams. A lot of people freaking out about it, and you know, it's I, it's. I don't think I've if seen you like seven. You like this one? It's a combination between seven and four. Yeah, I I'm gonna be honest with you. I haven't played the Resident Evil game since Code Veronica on the GameCube. It's it's been, it's been a, it's been a long time. I. 
I, I have no well, excuse. No, no, yeah. excuse, no excuses, Sart. No excuses, Sart. So <laughs> if, if, it makes you, if it makes you feel any better, I had never played any of them at all until I got I, – I ended up getting quarantined over Christmas over here because I came in contact with someone. Oh, so I had to spend, I had to spend 14 days in a room by myself, and one of my soldiers brought my TV and my PlayStation, and they, they were having to do a sale. So I played one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> I played six, but I hated it, skipped it, and then I played seven. Yeah, like that was just what I did for two weeks. Played, yeah, I just played through the Resident Evil series. So are you it, are you excited for the new Resident Evil movies that are going to be coming out that are based on the older versions of the games? Yeah, I, I, I heard about that. Uh, I'm excited for that, and there's a new Netflix show coming out. I'm going to check that out. Oh, you're right. I completely forgot yeah. about that. There is a Netflix, like a cartoon one, but yeah, yeah, or anime. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not. You know, the old Resident movie, the, the old Resident Evil movies. Uh, they, they are what they are. They're not bad movies, but you know, I always never, I've never even seen them. I saw the first one when it came out years ago. But yeah, I was just... yeah. I think I think I may have seen maybe the first and second one, but to me, those aren't Resident Evil movies. Like Silent Hill was more of a Resident Evil movie than than the than the Silent Hill movie. You know. Yeah, yeah, Even yeah. though Silent Hill was probably one of the better horror game movies out there, um, me, to me personally, but I, I, I just, I, I always, I, I'm ready for it. I, I'm re really excited about seeing. I, I saw a picture. There's a leaked photo of the mansion from Resident Evil One. That's really? out there on the internet. So there, there, there's a lot of hype for it. So if, if you're, you know, yeah. now that you've went back and dove into those old games, this would probably be very exciting for you to watch those movies when they come out. So what I what I didn't know about Resident Evil, and I guess why I skipped it all these years. And J Jay, have you ever played them? No, no. I tried so. playing. I tried playing the first one on the original PlayStation, and couldn't get into it, and never touched them again. Mm. So like, like when you think Resident Evil, you think oh, crazy wild story about zombies. What I had no idea like was the escape room aspect of it. Yeah. Like. I don't know how I just that I just missed all that information that like that game is it's not a zombie game it's like a giant escape room puzzle with a few zombies that are in your way absolutely and I'm like all about that like one two one and two were like that so I haven't played the original number two but I did play the remake and it was amazing uh, three was kind of just action four was all action but that was still my favorite one probably four is a blast yeah and seven seven goes first person. And then it's first person, but it brings back like that escape room element that one had, like that old school, yeah. like find this key to open this door that has this piece to bring here. Like I, I, I love that. And eight, eight has a little bit of that, but it's like the perfect balance between the uh, that old school Resident Evil and then that uh, that like action packed good stuff. That's cool. And you know we're yeah. at the, we're at a time now where graphics are like they're, they're you know they we're past its peak. So to have a resident to re to have a Resident Evil game now during these times, it's 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 exciting as hell to to see that. So uh, the, I still it, it, number. I'm sorry, to cut you. number seven, the scariest one in the series, and probably the scariest game I've ever played, without a doubt. Is if that, you've never is that seven. and that's single player only, correct? Yep. I, I believe all those Resident Evil games have always been single player. Which, I mean, yeah. hey. I would love to play a co-op Resident Evil game one day. That that you know, but hey, that would be cool actually. Yep. Yeah. It has a character for it too. Oh, it really does. It really does. Yeah. And, and you know, I'm not too familiar if they have like a multiplayer section in any of their games. But if they do, I just don't think that it gives it that. You know, because we all, you know, you play. We play a lot of these single player games. Like, um, fuck, I can't even snap my fingers. Um, Assassin's Creed. You know, a sad GTA, you know, games that have these vast, massive storylines and worlds that you wish that you could just do co-op instead of playing online with them. Yeah. Um, so they are doing this thing. Um, it's called it's called Reverse, like R-E Resident Evil Verse. <laughs> um, and that's like it has like all the characters from the like all the games and you play like it's like a. Kind of like a team deathmatch type thing. It looks like. Oh, That's interesting. But a few of the games have like a Rainbow uh, Six style kind of sounds yeah, like. Kind of, yeah, but a few of them have a. Uh, it's called like mercenaries mode, and that is a uh, think of like Call of Duty zombies, 
you go out and you tr- like get like the hordes and um they have that on the new game. I haven't played it yet, but Let's check that yeah, out. I've, I've, I don't think I've ever played the Resident Evil horde style game. I think maybe what was that? What was that game that we played a couple a couple months ago? That horror game where we're, it's like hide and seek and oh yeah yeah um oh I'm Call of Duty. No way out. Was it No Way Out? No, uh, something. Oh man, it was something. It wasn't in Call of Duty. Um, no, it's like a dead it's like something. A, dead something. Like somebody, it's like somebody, somebody plays the fucking somebody plays the fucking serial killer, and then everybody else has to get away from him. So you're playing. Oh, it's uh, like a daylight. De- yeah, dead by it. daylight. There daylight. it is. That's it. That's yeah. it. That's did did, did you guys play No Way Out? No, John keeps telling me about it, and I haven't. Oh, uh, a way out. That's the the two player game. <laughs> Yeah, that's the two yeah, player. Me, me and Kirsty played it. Yeah? Did yeah, you like it? it? Did you like yeah. it? Yeah, it's fun. It's, it's a great story, too. Like, decent little, like, five, six-hour thing. Yeah. Those, those, yeah, I mean, I uh, I played, like, the first, like, couple levels with my wife. And you, it, it's it's a story about two guys. It's like two guys escaping jail and just running from the law, trying to stay alive. Yeah, so, two brothers. Yeah. Yeah, so it's... Two brothers. So the, And there's a mountain. And it's coming yeah. down. <laughs> and what are you gonna do? <laughs> it's like the, alien, tomato, space invasion, sombrero. <laughs> Two you brothers. Can only save one, and you it's can a, only control one. <laughs> and what are you gonna do now? <laughs> like, there's always and now there's giant cats. <laughs> it's interesting because like these these co op games seem to be a thing now because it takes two just came out which is in the same concept. Um, yes. Two, there's another game called Two Brothers by the same people who made the way out yeah and that, that that's actually an older game it's just two brothers yeah it's, it's just, just called, the game is just called two brothers and then you have a way out and i and you know i a oh, portal you know you could this was something that you could have done oh, with yeah. portal which is army like, of two. Oh. that might that might be a little dating myself you'll play army of two i i remember that game i never played it but i, d- I definitely remember what you were talking about like yeah, was, yeah that was the sleepover game of the of the of the year i'm i'm shocked i'm shocked they haven't remade that game because I, I heard that every everybody that played that game fucking loved it that was oh, like yeah. a phenomenal yeah. game way, yeah. way 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 ahead of its time way fucking ahead of its time that was great have you always been the playstation guy no i have not um so i <laughs> it, it's super cheesy but i had a playstation growing up and then when PlayStation 2 came out, I went Xbox. And then when The Last of Us came out, I bought a used, refurbished PlayStation 3, played The Last of Us, and then said, whatever system this game's coming out on, I'm buying that system for its sequels. And I've just been a PlayStation guy since then. Interesting. And honestly, not just The Last of Us, but I mean, PlayStation's come out with like all those exclusives that you're just like, yeah, I'm on the right side That's for me. That's so, interesting. So you went opposite than what most people you usually do do because they you know they went play playstation 2 xbox mm-hmm. xbox xbox where you went um, playstation 2 xbox back to playstation yeah it's that's almost that's almost exactly what i did too I, I started on the original playstation then without kind of even asking for it i got an original xbox for uh christmas one year and then i and then i went to the 360 and then I kind of went to the one, and then when I got back to my last deployment, I was like, the like God of War had come out, Red Dead Redemption 2, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to get a PS4. So that's what I did. And so now, now I have a PS4, and then this last Christmas, my beautiful and wonderful, amazing woman uh, got me a Xbox. So I, I now have a PS4 and an Xbox like oh, as well. Which he, yeah. al- which he almost broke it. One. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When I was opening it. Yeah. That, I still... They, they, they made me do like a, they made me open the present like live on on the fucking podcast and I almost fucking fucked it up because I didn't know what the fuck. Yeah, the- it was like rap was like in like seventeen <laughs> different packages. And like you know you know me, Chris. So like I started getting flustered, you know, because I was like I couldn't open like yeah. I just started like fucking like ripping shit and tearing stuff and there's knife in the top of it. Yeah, I still, yeah. I still have the the beh- the behind the scenes clip and it's funny because he he's he's rip he's like ugh. He's ripping it open, and then he does something, and the Xbox flew out the box. Like, it jumped up, and it flew back in, and he was like, okay, I think I need to stop doing this right now. <laughs> <laughs> when, I re- when I realized what I was handling, I was like, oh, shit. Like, I'm going to break this thing if I don't stop. Like, but, but oh, like, 
you know, but yeah, like I was definitely Team Xbox. Like when when the you know Halo one two three came Absolutely, out, yeah, you know, Reach was great. Uh, Gears of War one two three, and then once like those trilogies like I felt came to a close, I played Halo four and I was like, yeah, I'm done with this. And then kind of the Last of Us came out, and I'm like, you know, ten almost ten years ago now, you're like, this is the future of gaming. If right. This is yeah. out on PlayStation. Then I'm I'm Team PlayStation. Yeah. You know. That's just kind of how it happened. I'm not like against Xbox. Like once Xbox starts getting like you know those great exclusives or something, I, I might dip well, into one again. But don't worry, Starfield's, well, we, Starfield's well, we, coming we, out this year, so we talk yeah, exclusive. We talk, <laughs> we talk about it all the time on this podcast too. Like like the the, the next the next the next big thing is cross platform. So it yeah, won't even so it won't really. even fucking, it won't even fucking matter what pla- what 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 platform you're on. It's like you're still going to be able to play with your friends. Yeah. You know, you have a PlayStation, they have an Xbox, you're still going to be able to fucking hang out and play and game right. together. So it's like, you know, whatever. So And crossplay is such a crazy thing now. I just uh, I just downloaded this game that came out yesterday called Knockout City. It's a uh, it's dodgeball. It's fucking dodgeball. You're my boy, huh. Blue. It's fucking dodgeball <laughs> and and you could play on mobile, PC, Xbox, PlayStation, and I think, and I think Nintendo Switch as well. How come how, how, we need more of this? We need more of this. I want, Absolutely. I want GTA to be fucking crossplay. I think it's time. I, you know, if they want to squeeze, if they want to squeeze the juice out the lemon, and they want to bring a next gen, they better, they have to give us something. Right. I saw, I saw something on Facebook the other day. It was like PlayStation Two had three Grand Theft Autos. Now Grand Theft Auto has three Playstations. That's right. <laughs> Exactly right. That's exactly right. Yeah, it's a goddamn shame too. It's a goddamn yeah. shame. Like I don't know what pisses Dude, you me remember, off. Do you remember we at at Fort Leonard Wood? You and me went to like the midnight release of that game. Do you remember that? Yep. No Cause, shit. Yeah, because yeah, we, we, yeah, me, me and Chris both got like the fucking super deluxe like you know <laughs> it, it, like it like does everything except suck your dick you know version. You know? Like, yeah, because I, I they asked me when I wanted to reenlist and I said that Wednesday. Because I knew I was going to the midnight release, I went into work real quick, re-enlisted, got the rest of the day off, went right back home, kept playing with GTA Five. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yep. I, yeah, I remember that. Yes. That is that is, that is funny. I actually I bought I got GTA Five for three sixty, and then I got the Xbox One, and I was like, I have to fucking pay for this again. Yeah. Right. Right. You know, like that's what pisses me off. Like, I don't know. I don't know what makes me more angry: the fact that they're doing this again for the next generation of consoles, or the fact that I'm still going to fucking buy it for a third time. <laughs> like they're winning. I'm letting them win, and I know I am. Yeah, and but there's GTA and there's is so no good. And there's it's no, on Game Pass, Chris. If you have an Xbox, it's on Game Pass, so you can okay. get you can get it for free right now. Just saying. No, no, no did you know they're re, they're re-releasing it in November? Yeah. Oh, fuck that. They're fucking they're fuck updating all. updating everything. Fuck all that. Fuck Adding, all. Stuff and that's what I'm saying. It, it, it makes you wonder. We got first person for the for Xbox One and PS4 era. So what's next? So like, I I do know I do know uh, they said that if you have the game, like if you own it for PlayStation Four, you get like you get the upgrade for free. Yeah, not for the next. Yeah, I don't think you get it for Xbox. Sweet. Oh. Can't yeah. can't wait. Can't wait. <laughs> Okay. He's still shooting cops in the alley in GTA Four. All right. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, Chris. Chris, I, I used to be so when I used to be extremely good, like extremely good at GTA Four, yeah. and I would intentionally like get into like these like six star wanted level situations, and I would literally go on like a forty five minute massacre, and then escape, and then escape the wanted level, and I and like I remember because Chris, Chris has always been like way bigger, way like way more of a gamer than I ever was. But like I've said many times in this podcast, and Chris can attest to this, when I play, when I find a game that I like, I play the absolute fucking shit out of it. Yeah. And so I was so good at GTA 4, I would sit there and just waste, and like, oh, by the way, this is with no cheat codes either. Like, I would go in, I'd go in, I'd start a firefight, and all my health and ammo pickups would be from the fucking cops and the SWAT and all that other shit, right? Huh. And then, and I'd, I'd, I'd kill people for like fucking 30 minutes straight, and then I'd fucking escape the fucking one level. And I like I got I got like that good at that fucking game like I got I got that good it was, it was insane. Remember, remember we used to call your basement the heroin den because we we'd sit, <laughs> we'd sit down there, we'd crank beers and then at some point we just get so drunk that like we just wouldn't even talk anymore we'd just be drunk with keto <laughs> fingers and like 
after like you'd be playing GTA 4 for like two hours and like no conversation and you'd just be like got a bottleneck him in the alley <laughs> <laughs> oh that's great <laughs> That's great. And, and while we're talking about GTA, before we get into the final thought, um, there was a player recently who put a mod in the game to... The mod is to have one health point, and he beat the game in nine hours without taking any damage. No, hit, awesome. no hit and runs, no Nothing. stars. Good for him. Nine... He nine Nine hours with one health point. That's fucking badass. That is badass. Yeah. That reminds me of like, uh, I've, I've told the story before here on the podcast, but when I was a kid, when I got the uh, original Nintendo, I got so good I got so good at Super Mario Brothers, um, I could beat the game with one life, like uh, without dying. And huh. like, yeah. And like, I, that was like a, a shining moment in gaming. My, my, my One of my proudest gaming moments is actually also on the N- Nintendo Entertainment System is I, I beat the game on NES called... Uh, Ninja Gaiden, and oh, that is, yeah. that, is an ex- that is an excruciatingly hard game. And, yeah. I, and when I was like, I don't know, fucking seven, eight, nine years old, however fucking old I was, like thirty fucking years ago, like I beat that game as a kid, and that's like to this day one of my proudest gaming moments that I beat that game. Like, yeah, what, what's yeah. I, don't know if, I don't know if you can play Demon Souls, but like, what, like what I wouldn't give to have Jay Campbell sit in this chair, like watching me play, because I know it's a game you'd love to watch. Yeah. Demon, yeah. Demon. So, some games for me are way better to watch than fucking be the guy playing it because I just I get fucking frustrated. <laughs> I will say though, like with Demon Souls, like if you die, it is one of those games like it, it's probably your fault. Yeah. Like. Right. Right. Like it really, and like, that's a, and that's a classic series too. A very fun classic yeah. series. Like we 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 know Jay. He doesn't play shit that doesn't interest him. <laughs> all this all all this shit with all that shit that's in there would interest him. So yeah, yeah, exactly. That's that's that. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, so like you gotta think of it like this. This is what Demon Souls does different than every other game. You are in every game. You're this little guy. You know, you're you're David. You beat Goliath with a with a few swings, right? In Demon Souls, you you know you're 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 Jim, <laughs> <laughs> right? King Kong, <laughs> like. Right. He, he's going to hurt you with King Kong damage, and you're going to hurt him with, you know, your gym p- damage. <laughs> with your puny <laughs> little... Bing. But but when Jim goes up against Jim, you're going to do, you know, fucking guy-to-guy damage, but he's also going to give you that same that same stuff. So it's like, that. Like that's the challenge, is that it doesn't baby you in the sense that other games do where you don't really notice it. Like, and, like, once I figured that out, and, like, you kind of learn how to work your way around, it's... Yeah, that kind of that kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, uh, Ghost of Tsushima, like where yeah. that was the first that was the, that was the first game that made me want to learn all the different techniques and like fighting moves just so mm-hmm. I could get better. You mm-hmm. know, like the, the, the sword fighting the sword fighting element of that game is is phenomenal. Like yeah. it, it made it made me want it made the game that was the first game that made me want to level up my character because yeah. in those games it's like. I'm just going to get the best fucking sword and the best shield or whatever and learn, like, the two moves that kill everybody, and I don't give a fuck after that. <laughs> Button man. As, 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 as awesome of a fucking game as it was, uh, God of War was like that. Like, where once you kind of got a little bit of a handle on the controls, you didn't need to learn all the techniques to beat God of War, right? No. But that, it, that's, and go- that's exactly Demon Souls, like, but, like... Yeah, like, and then Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah. It's like it made me want to learn all the different sword techniques, like different techniques for different different uh, enemies, whatever. You know, sometimes you're sometimes you're stealth, sometimes you're fighting four guys at once, whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it was like that was the first game that made me actually want to learn like every little move and combo, yeah. basically. Like in Demon Souls, if uh, like you know you can do this move, you can do this move, and you can jump this way. That's all you need. Right. The enemies, the enemies, they're in the same spot every time. They do the same moves almost every time. There's no surprises. So if you keep dying the same way every time, you're, you're doing you're, something wrong. You're refusing to learn. Right. Not right. Looking at yeah. I might, have, I might have to dig into that. Is that is it only on PS5 or is it on PS4 too? Yeah, that, that was one of the big PS5 exclusives when it came out. Yeah. Fuck. Hey, you always said you were looking for something to get you into the next gen. 
problem with the PS5. My main problem with the PS5 is the online shit, yeah. where they're gonna fucking where they're gonna fucking record everything. Chris Chris can tell you all about my fucking my, my Chris can tell you all about my my subtle fucking paranoia. Where like there's certain stuff that I, don't, I really don't care about. Like obviously like I'm on a podcast, right? But there's other stuff that I do care about, and it's one of those things where that that that's that shit worries me. That shit worries me. Like when you're like recording, when you're when you're online, yeah, if, you, if you're if you're playing a game online on the PS5, Sony is recording you, and they they say that they're only recording five minutes at a time, mm-hmm. and it's it's and it's allegedly for uh, for complaints, like if, if somebody's being harassed or freaking whatever, like online, allegedly that's what it's for. The reality is, like, let's be honest, this is a fucking multinational corporate conglomerate. Let's fucking be honest, they're probably just fucking recording you. And by virtue of you playing the game, you are agreeing to allow them to record you. So anything you fucking say over comms, over my, over your mic, while you're playing an online game with other gamers, wh- whoever they are, friends, people around the world, whatever, it's being fucking recorded. And I'm not, I'm not fucking with that shit. Like, I'm just not fucking with that shit. Well, that's, that's crazy. But to me, that's crazy for two reasons. One, your cell phone just heard everything you said. And Try- two, yeah, trying yeah, yeah. to Try- 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 post it online. So you're not. That's, I literally. That was literally. That was literally the preface to that whole. Thing. I literally just said that. Thank you. Like, that's and that that's like you 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 are the exact person that would understand that. Like I'm I'm very particular about my fucking paranoia. Yeah, you know I mean? yeah, like, exactly. So no, I, I get it. I mean, you know me, good old American New England guy. I don't, I don't care what they hear. <laughs> fucking Captain they, America. Shit. I, I don't I don't care what they hear. It's usually okay. <laughs> right. Right. Now my final question before we go into the final thought. Oh, real, hey, don't forget, John. Uh, I got I got one little short thing for uh, military news. Bro. Oh but, yeah, yeah. We'll we'll do yeah, that. So. We'll do that too. My wife is always talking about how the seafood. I don't need seafood, but my wife is always talking about how the seafood is like the best up in New England. Is it true? Uh the lobster, at least, yeah. The lobster. That's she always says that the lobster. Yeah. Oh, hands right. down. Hands down. So. I, I would. I would. I'm, I'm not a big fan of seafood, but I would probably break break tradition to eat new hampshire lobster with my buddy like oh, i mean like you know you know everyone like maine lobster maine lobster it's literally the same exact lobster it's just maine's more famous <laughs> it's just, you're just in new hampshire now <laughs> same, same yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah absolutely <laughs> so uh real quick before we go into our final thoughts um i wanted to bring up something very briefly yesterday a guy a it was a it was a colonel. He's a former colonel. He's a retired colonel, Ralph Puckett, and he received a very long overdue Medal of Honor. He is ninety four years old, and he was a he's a he was a he's kind of a mainstay down at Fort Benning uh, with the Rangers. But the actions that he um, that occurred that he earned his Medal of Honor for happened seventy years and six months ago. So the fact that he was even alive to receive his long overdue Medal of Honor is pretty amazing. Um, there's video on the internet right now. You can watch it. This dude literally was on stage with the president, uh, with a, with a walker and he actually shoved, he actually shoved his walker to the side so that he could stand at attention while the president put the the medal of honor around his neck. Um, next on the list after Colonel Ralph Puckett, there is a sergeant from the Iraq war. His name is Alwyn Cash. He was a sergeant first class. And he pulled seven people out of a Bradley out of a Bradley fighting vehicle that had been that had, had been basically destroyed and was on fire. And he went back one at a time and pulled seven people out of this Bradley fighting vehicle while it was on fire. Um, he uh, later died of his of his of the wounds he suffered from burns. He was burned over two, two somewhere between two thirds and three quarters of his body. And he made sure that everybody that he pulled out of that Bradley fighting vehicle was being treated you know, being uh, treated by medical professionals before he was. Uh, later died of his wounds. Ooh. And at Fort Stewart, they just named, um, I'm reading this thing right now. It says, um, scattered around army installations throughout the country, reddish brown memorial signs labeling buildings tell the stories of their namesakes, namesakes in, dis- in distinct white text. They typically have the honorees highest combat decoration depicted at the top of the sign. Um when you look at the top of the sign for the front of the newly renamed Sergeant First Class Alwyn Cash Garden outside of the 3rd Infantry Division headquarters at Fort Stewart, you quickly realize it's blank. So on December 4th of last year, um, Congress passed a bill or a resolution, I don't know what, 
what it would be called, but a, probably a resolution that allowed the that basically allowed an exception to typically Medal of Honor recipients have to be awarded within five years of their action. Congress passed a resolution. Range of that. Last, yeah, Congress passed a resolution last December um, to waive to waive the five year period for this gentleman's Medal of Honor. So obviously there was a lot of stuff going on in December and January. We're not going to get into that right now. So President Trump didn't really get around to awarding this Medal of Honor. So President Biden, uh, if you're looking for future news, President Biden will probably at some point in the near future be awarding uh, Sergeant First Class Alvin Cash his, his, also his long overdue Medal of Honor. This guy, people have been fighting for this guy to get the Medal of Honor for like 15 fucking years. And like his, his, former, his former peers... His, his superiors, his subordinates, um, three three of the soul he pulled he pulled out six soldiers and an, an interpreter. Three of those soldiers did did later die, but the fact that he kept going back into a fire, yep. literally a fire, to pull the fuel out. Yes, like he was, he he was he is the the epitome of you know a person that deserves the Medal of Honor. So, you know, here in the next couple weeks or couple months, be looking in the newspapers, guys. Like Sergeant yep. First Class Alwyn Cash will probably be receiving a long overdue medal of honor somewhere here in the future. So and I, congratulations to Colonel Ralph Puckett. Who, and I, and we look and we look forward to Sergeant First Class Alvin Cash receiving his as well. So who, I just want to add in too that that uh, Sergeant First Class Alvin Cash's son Andrew is is also uh, a soldier in the US Army as well. Yes, he graduated he graduated infantry infantry OSA last July. So he is now among my peers, he's now among my peers, the fellow f- fellow Blue Cordian. So that's awesome. Who, uh, yeah, we that's love, awesome. We love here. We love hearing things like that. It's you know, we love we love here. We love hearing our heroes at the top of the mountain. You know, it. I I, t- I tell you what, John. It, it it's it's cliche. You know, because a lot of people. You know, obviously, our generation of warfighter. We've been we've been thanked for our service like every single day since we joined. And then every every once in a blue moon, somebody calls you a fucking hero, like, and not 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 uh, not sarcastically. And then yeah. of course the 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 cliche, the cliche response that we give in the army is, well, well, I'm not a hero, but I've served next, I've, I've served with a few, right? And the reality is, is we have served next to a few. Like we 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 have we have all all three of us have been around legitimate heroes, and it's one of those things where. It's we give we give the cliche response like oh thanks for your service cool thanks for your support right cliche response yep. somebody calls me somebody calls me a hero well I'm not a hero but I've I've known a few right I've served with a few right but it's not a cliche with some of these people like it's 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 the truth like I have I have I have walked amongst giants and the army gave me the opportunity to to stand next to giants you know and just being in their presence sometimes is very very humbling but it's also very very beautiful. And those are going to be some of the good memories that I take with me when when I when I leave active duty service uh, this uh, this oct- this coming October. Those are going to be some of the memories that carry me home, you know, down the road as I get older. And I look I look back I look back on my my time in the army, right? So there you go. I love it. Do you have anything that you would like to say before we end the show? Uh, no, I mean, like I had a ton of fun. Like this is good stuff. Cool. Uh, but yeah, I, like, I, w- I just want to say thank you. You are our first active duty service member on the show, and it was very exciting to learn really? about yeah to learn about 12C and to get into the mind of of an active duty service member during the, during this interesting time while it while everything seems to be coming oh, yeah. back together. Um, I like, didn't know that I filled y'all in some more dirt. Yeah, <laughs> no. Hey, there could always be a part two. Shit. <laughs> yeah um you know but but again thank you it's truly truly appreciative um i you know this is a this is a good way for especially people who want to join you know you just help them open up their eyes to a really cool occupation in the military so thank you for that and thank yeah. you for your insight yeah. on everything that we spoke about today and just no thank you for coming you know the time the time difference is is drastically different from oh, yeah. literally all, all, all three of us, we're all yeah. in different time zones. So thank you for taking the time to come join us on on this late evening for you. While it's no, not like, even twelve yeah. o'clock here. No, I hear you. Yeah. No, thanks for having me. Like this is super cool. Like just getting to you know catch up with an old friend and you know meet a new one. You know this Absolutely. is cool. This is you know so yeah, I really appreciated it, guys. 
Yeah, I, I, I just, I just have to say too, John. Like, there was a group. There was a group of us at Fort Leonard Wood. Um, there was four. There was four of us. We, 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 we were very, very unironically called ourselves the Four Horsemen, right? And when I met Chris, and me and Chris started hanging out a lot, like Chris, Chris kind of became like the fifth member of the Four Horsemen, and like, you know, these are some of the best friends I've ever made in the Army, like by far. Um, and we all, all of us still keep in, keep in contact with each other. Um, and Chris was, Chris was always the best of us. Like the, 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 the four, the, the original four of us are just a bunch of fucking degenerates. Okay. Like I, I cannot, I cannot stress that enough. Like all of us are just degenerates. And Chris was like, Chris was the best of us. Chris deserved better than us. Right. But, <laughs> but he, but he, but he stuck, but he stuck around and we, we've, we've now made, you know, lifelong friends, you know, because my of fucking that. eulogy. What's, what's that? What's that? It's my fucking eulogy. Yeah. No, it's not your fucking eulogy. Like, you're going to be giving a eulogy for fucking all of us because we're fucking assholes and you're not. Well, if there was, <laughs> if there was, a, if there was a fifth horseman, it would probably be life. So yeah. it looks yeah. like well, it works that's, perfectly. That, that's Chris. That is Chris. Chris was the life to all of our fucking death, dude. Like, trust me. Like, he was. <laughs> what? Cuddles the clown. <laughs> Cuddles the clown. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah we call, yeah, was, yeah, it was our joke. Yeah, we we called him Cuddles the clown, like because fucking you know you got you got like war and death and pestilence and famine and then Cuddles the clown. You know what I mean? Like fucking like. <laughs> hey, you always said your magic number is five. You always said that, so yeah, <laughs> yeah, probably your reason before that, and Don't for the bro. and for our. 12 concurrent listeners on the audio in India and Brazil and Canada and America and Singapore. Yeah. The Singapore government, actually. That's yeah. the best part. Yeah. That's the best huh? part. Germany. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we, tra- we, we tracked down the IP address and it's like in Singapore and it's, it's a fucking government installation, dude. <laughs> yeah, when we get offline, I'll, 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 I'll tell you that, that exact name too. Um, you know, but, as as you know, well, we're all veterans over 180 days, but uh, with two active duty soldiers, NCOs here, um, it, it is it is never it is not a, it is not a good day if we don't promote the fact that there's 22 missing every day. It, so sick. Hang on, buddy. Go with your mother. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> Uh, we we promote it every week. The military promotes it every single day, whether it's your final formation, your your Friday weekend safety brief. Twenty two a day is too much. One a day is too much. We have to be there for each other. We need to, you know, if we if we feel a certain way, you know, no matter what time of the day, no matter where you are, if you're in your car or, if, or you know if you're in your bathtub or if you're just sitting in your living room and you're feeling down, make a phone call. If it's hard for you to contact your friends or family, you can always call the Suicide Prevention Hotline at 1-800-273-TALK. That's 1-800-273-8255. There's always someone listening, and if you don't want to talk, you can always text them because there's always someone there to listen to your story no matter what. There, There are people volunteering, waiting for your call to save your life. Don't waste another day. It's only up from here. Absolutely. I uh, just to add on real quick to that is uh, early, earlier when I asked Chris about like the hardest part of being in the army, you know, um, for, for me at, after 11 years, the hardest part has been losing people, you know, whether whether losing people downrange, losing people after they come back home. Um, there is somebody out there. Somebody will pick up the phone. You just keep trying. Like somebody doesn't answer at three o'clock in the morning. Freaking try the next guy or gal, you know, and so on and so forth. And for those of you out there that might not be struggling, if you get a random ass phone call from your, your your fucking battle brother, your battle sister at fucking two or three in the morning, it ain't for fucking no reason. You're not just getting drunk dialed. Okay, answer your fucking phones. Jesus fucking Christ. Like answer your fucking phones, people. Like please. Cause somebody they're not they're not sometimes you just need to hear a voice. You know? I find I, I've found myself calling people at two o'clock in the morning. I wasn't necessarily in a bad place. I just wanted to hear a friendly voice. Yeah. So answer your goddamn phones, please. So, so, yeah. There you go. Well, thank you, guys. See you next week. Thank you, John.
Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Jay, as always. You guys have me, man. It was a ton of fun. Hell yeah.